Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight again. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you for your spirit. We know that as the spirit who inspired the word is present with us, it will illuminate and enlighten us and we'll see wondrous things out of your word. We're praying that the Bible study tonight will be beneficial to everyone in Jesus' name. Strengthen us through the study of your word. Make our families better as a result of the study of the word. And we pray that this study will channel blessings into us, into our families, and through us to other families in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We welcome every one of you to our Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. As you look at the outline, you'll see we've been following a series. And it's a series on marriage and the family. We are pleading with you that as you listen to these studies, you'll not just be hearers of the watch alone, point by point, item by item. All that the Lord is revealing, you'll apply them to yourselves. You go back home, husband and wife will sit down together, go through together, and make the necessary corrections and receive the grace of God into your life. In such a way, you'll be able to build a happy, godly home. Today we are having the study building a happy, godly home. Uh, there are two words I want to think about. There is the word home, there is the word house. House is the physical building in which you are living. The home is uh, the people living in that house. The father, the mother, the children, the family there. Building a godly home is like building a good house. And it needs a prayerful, thoughtful, careful preparation. Many of us you have experience. If you are going to build a house, you call it the architect. There is the design from the architect, but then the design will depend upon your purpose and the use of that house. And of course, in preparation to building a house, there will be adequate resources that will be needed from time to time in building that house and after the house is built, in maintaining that house. And building a godly home is no less demanding. And the steps you took in building a good house, that's the same step you are going to take in building a godly home. First of all, you consult the divine architect. He knows your life from the past to the present and to the future. And he knows all the people in your community and in the church. He is the one that can make the choice for you. You will not say, I want to choose like this, I want to choose like that. Not where I want to be, not where I want to go, not what I want to choose. The Lord will choose for me and that's better far I know. So let him bid me go or stay. Go ahead now or stay for some while. I'll choose for you because that is a better approach. After consulting the divine architect that is almighty God himself, he makes the choice of a life partner for you. And then, as you need resources in building a good house, so you will need resources as well, physical, material, spiritual, in every other way, so that you'll be able to raise up a good, godly home. And no doubt you've seen some houses in your community that just collapsed. Many, many times it's because of the unfaithfulness of the builders that they did not follow the architect's design and specifications. And they wanted to take some shortcuts. And the shortcuts became costly and dangerous. Many lives are shattered today and many homes are broken today because many, many people, they want to take some shortcuts. They neglect the divine plan and the divine pattern. And so they have bitter homes and broken homes. But I have good news for you. Almighty God can take your bitter life and broken home and he can make a better blessed home. And that's what we're expecting that during this series of studies, he'll do that for every one of us in Jesus' name. And whatever the life may be at present, whatever the family may be up at present, shattered or broken, the Lord can begin even from today to remold and to renew so that he'll give you a happy, godly life and home and that you will do in Jesus' name. If that is going to take place, you'll come to Christ. You hand over everything, the shattered life, the broken home, hand over everything to the Lord and give him a chance to make your life better and your home blessed. I was still in First Peter chapter 3, verse 4. Please open your Bible and be looking at the scriptures as I read to you from here. First Peter chapter 3, reading from verse 4. But let it be the hidden man of the heart 
in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. For after this manner in old time, the holy women also trusted in God, adorned, they adorned themselves, being in subjection to their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, your husbands dwell with them that is dwell with your wives, according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Uh, Peter here, by the inspiration of the Spirit of God, lifts up a family before us. Not that there were no problems in that family, but that eventually the Lord gave them a child called laughter. Happiness came into their family. Laughter came into their family. Joy came into their family. And there were things that made that happen. That's why he lifted up that family and said, as it was with them, so it can be with you and it can be with me. And so he gives us from the scripture something that we too we can follow. And with the grace of God because they are heirs together of the grace of life. That same grace can be in our lives and make our families what our families ought to be. Obviously the Lord is going to take over your family and is going to do everything he ought to do. So that the joy, the happiness, the blessedness we are expecting and the godliness that ought to be there will be there. You will begin with the Lord. If you have not been born again, you repent of your sins. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You accept him. As your personal savior, he comes into your life. He takes over your life. You are born again. You are a member of the family of God. He does that for the husband. He does that for the wife. And the two of them now in Christ join together. Not only because of the marriage vow, but by the very blood of the Lamb. Then he begins to do something new, something fresh in their lives. And the family begins a journey of happiness even in this world. As we are talking about the family, we are going to start from the very beginning. We want uh, the study to benefit those who have not married as well as those who have married. We have three elements we are considering in the message. Number one, beginning with the selection process. Number two, building with a scriptural pattern. Number three, the basis of a satisfactory partnership. And let's go now to element number one, beginning with the selection process. Almost everybody knows that marriage is very important. Even the people of the world, they know how important marriage is. And you see that there are people in the world that are very slow, very patient they'll be waiting they'll be looking at everything they do not want to jump before they look therefore they want to be sensible about it in making a choice of a life partner if the young people are not as reasonable their parents uh, want to be reasonable and their parents begin to go to the places they know they want to check up because they know that the secret of tomorrow is not in the hand of any human being they want to go to different places to go and check up if my if my daughter will marry this man if my son will marry this lady what will it be in the future and though some believing parents will come and tell their children they'll say i've gone to check up where we normally check up and they tell us there is no way there the point i'm telling you is even though some believers in their own way although it's a crooked negative or cultic way they still want to check up is there a way there are the children of this world not wiser in their generation than the children of light shouldn't we borrow a leaf from them as they are checking up from their gods and go to the eternal god and go to the God that can never make a mistake because his ways are infallible. As a child of God, you have not married yet, you want to get married, you go on your knees. The one who saved you, who wants better things for your life, you pray so that he will make the choice for you. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8, better is the end of a sin than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. It is not just the way you feel now, the love you have now, the infatuation that may be driving you or drawing you now. But the end of the thing is what you should be looking at. And the Almighty God that knows the end from the beginning, you go to Him. Because you are thinking this choice will affect my future, will affect the rest of my life. Let Him make the choice for you. In chapter 6, verse 12 of Ecclesiastes, for who knoweth 
what is good for man in this life. Your father does not know, your mother does not know, your friend does not know. Who knows what is good for man in this life? All the days of his vain life, which is spendeth as a shadow. For who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? Who can tell you the future? God can. That's why you go to the Lord in prayer before you make a choice. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 7. For he knoweth not that which shall be. For who can tell him when it shall be? You see what the Lord is telling us? He knows our limitations. He knows we do not know the future. And if we choose by the sight of our eyes, we choose by the feeling of our body, we choose by the recommendation of a friend, we choose by the uh, affirmation of a parent, they do not know the future. They will mislead us. And what we choose will become a bone in our neck, a thorn in our flesh, and a cause of sorrow and conflict the rest of our lives. In Proverbs chapter 19 verse 14. Houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers. But if an imprudent wife is from the Lord. And that's why you go to the Lord in prayer. And that's why you ask the Lord. That's why you want him to choose for you. And that's why you tell people that are hurrying you up. They said, have you not got married? What are you waiting for? Are there not women in your church? Are, not, are there not women in your community? Go ahead and choose somebody. If they are not converted, bring them to your church and convert them. And make sure that you get married in time. Time is going. There are people that have chosen like that. And they, they've gone to the village or they've gone to the community. They just pick a woman from the street. A child of God marrying a child of the devil. The devil becomes your father-in-law. That father-in-law, he will make you see pepper. And there is natural pepper. There is spiritual demonic pepper. And there are some men that go around and they go to marry a daughter or somebody connected with mermaid spirit. And the mermaid spirit becomes your mother-in-law. And then you invite that woman home and now you are telling stories. That's why the Lord is telling us 2 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Unbelievers are in different shapes and sizes. There are illiterate unbelievers. There are educated educated unbelievers. There are some uh, physically beautiful unbelievers. Uh, there are some unbelievers that can blow grammar a lot. Uh, there are unbelievers from your village. There are unbelievers from my village. Uh, there are unbelievers that go to church. There are unbelievers that don't go to church. And whatever they are, whoever they are, wherever they are found, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has seed that believeth with an infidel? What agreement? Agreement in marriage? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? If you are born again, if Christ has come into your heart, if your body now is the temple of the Spirit of God, if you are a member of the family of God, your sins are washed away, you have a transformed life, a changed life, ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. And at the same commandment, instruction, exhortation, they were given in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 7, reading from verse 1. The Lord wants all the children of Israel, they must never attempt to marry the Canaanites or the nations around them. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 1, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Gagashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations listen to this, Greater and mightier than all. It tells us in verse 2. When the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee. Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them. Nor show mercy unto them. Nor show mercy unto them. Hey, you don't marry a person because you know. You know she doesn't have a father. She doesn't have a mother. And she is suffering. She is like an orphan. I pity her. And because of the compassion and pity I have for her. 
just to take care of her. I think I'll decide to marry her. You don't marry on that basis. Or somebody becomes a newcomer. The persecution is too much for her. And they're dribbling her here and there. And just to be able to take care of her. I don't want her to backslide. Although I have not prayed. Although I have not gone through the selection process. According to the word of God. The teaching of the scriptures. But I just want to pity her. And marry her because of mercy. You don't marry on that ground. In verse 3, neither shalt thou make marriages for them. Thy daughter, thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. He's just telling us what he must say in chapter 3, verse 3. Uh, look at what he must say in chapter 3, verse 3. Can two walk together except they, are, they be agreed? You believe in repentance? Is she agreed on that? You believe in conversion and salvation? Does she have agreement on that? You believe in faithfulness, walking in a righteous life without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Is there agreement between you on the doctrines of the Bible? You believe that we ought to plan our lives and plan our families and everything we do on the basis, on the foundation, the very solid foundation of the, of the infallible, unchanging word of God. Is there agreement on that? In fact, it is not just that she is also born again. She is also going to church. She is going to church. She is born again in another denomination. Does she believe the same thing that you believe? Can two work together except they be agreed? That's why we will go to God in prayer. And the Lord Jesus Christ has told us, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Uh, I've been praying for a long time. I have not got. You are contradicting the Lord because it says, Everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Ah, but I know some people who ask the Lord. And what they said they got is now a bone, a son in their flesh. You mean you want to contradict Jesus? Let all men be last. Let God be true. You know, you can't tell about those people. You don't know how they chose what they chose. Because Jesus said, Oh, what man is there of you? Whom is son? If he ask him bread, shall he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father which is in heaven give bad things, evil things, demonic things, son in the flesh, he will give good, good things to those that ask him. The Lord will choose for you. That's better. Far than any other thing you can have. So, you will not say, I want to have my way. I'm in a hurry. I want to get it now. Now, let him bid me go or stay. That's enough for me. At the right time. In the right place. The Lord will make a good choice for me. He will do it for you in Jesus' name. Then we go to point number two, building with a scriptural pattern. And now you have got marriage, the husband and the wife, and forever you are together until death do you part. What's the pattern we ought to follow so that now as you are married, the Lord will be able to see to it that you have a happy home, a godly home. And whatever is happening now, you can look away from that, and you can hand over everything to the Lord, and the Lord will still bring something better out of the bitter life of today. I've read first Peter Peter chapter 3 to you already and in verses uh, 4 to 7 you see the example of Abraham and Sarah uh, they married when they were Abraham and Sarai and they were barren for a long time and they were in a hurry they didn't wait for the time of the law eventually problems came in the family and the Lord eventually appeared to them a transformation took place Abraham became Abraham Sarai became Sarah and as the Lord touched them and individually they were changed the family also was changed and eventually now the scripture is even making them example and it's making them people that we can follow from the negative side he brought them to the positive side if he did that for them can he not do it for your family i said can he not do it for your family he will do it. What are the building blocks if we are going to build according to scriptural pattern? In Ephesians chapter 5. Reading from verse 22. Ephesians chapter 5. 
from verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husband as unto the Lord. Now when the Lord says this, you may look at your husband, and you may look at your life, and you may look at your very nature and your attitude. And maybe you have married for a number of years. Now you say, how can I do that? If we think of the difficulties we have, because we look at the whole commandment the Lord has given us as a heavy thing, and we say, how can I do it? You live a day at a time. It's a way like when you want to carry a bucket of water and you try to lift it up it's very very heavy and you say I know what I will do. You take another bucket and you use a little cup, put a little, carry it over there, bring it back, put a little, carry it there, little by little like that, a cup at a time a little part at a time, you'll carry the whole bucket. If what brought problem in our family is the argument and the conflict and the wife is not able to submit and then you say, oh, that's my habit. You live a day at a time. When something comes up, then you are gentle now and the gentleness is just for these five minutes and then the next five minutes and then the next five minutes as you submit. Little by little like that, a whole day will go and when this day has gone, you wake up tomorrow, God, I thank you. There was peace in our family yesterday. You helped me yesterday today. He will help you today. A day at a time like that, it will become your habit. You now will love your husband. There will be submission to your peace will come in your family. As he's talking to the wife, he's talking to the husband. In verse 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And there are some of us men, we're always calling our wives to attention. And we're always reminding the wife, you are too forgetful. You don't remember. It's this wives submit to your husband as the church is submitting to Christ. But the same chapter also says, Husband, you will love your wife as Christ has loved the church. Authentic love, unconditional love, sacrificial love. That when we were not lovable, Christ died for the ungodly. Have you noticed that when we have a bucket of water to carry, and then it's so heavy for one person, and then the wife is on this side, the husband is on this side, you lend the helping hand, and with the two hands, one hand of the wife, one hand of the husband, and the bucket of water in between them, leisurely, you will even be discussing, having a nice time, and you carry the bucket of water to the place you want to take it. Is that not how to carry the problems of the family? The husband lends a helping hand, and the wife also does her part, as both of them are going side by side, rejoicing together, having the grace of God together, bearing that responsibility together. She is submitting, you are loving, that's how you have a happy home. In verse 33, the emphasis is uh, made the conclusion. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. Even as himself. Hey, you know how you love yourself. How you like to dress so you match. Uh, you know, they know that you are educated. You are working in a good place. You know when you are sick, how you need care. How you love yourself. You know when you are lonely, how you need companionship. You know how you feel when your wife shows respect to you. That same way you love yourself. You will love your wife. You will provide adequately for her like you provide adequately for yourself. As you dress neatly and moderately to the place of work and people know that you are working in a very good place and it appears that uh, you know you, you are getting on in life, your wife will not be dressing like a slave, like a village woman. The love you have for yourself and you are providing for yourself, you provide for your wife. As you feed on nourishing food so that you will be healthy in the same way your wife will feed on nourishing food. You, you love yourself, you love your people. When your relatives come, you know you take care of them. I want my people when they get back to the village and they report that this is the way I treated them, they will know that I'm a real family man. And the same thing when her own relatives come to you. That's the way you are going to take care of them because the love you have for yourself is the same love you have for her. 
and the wife see that she reverence, she honors, she respects her husband. And the respect we are talking about is not lip service. It's not superficial sin. It's not only when the wife, when the husband is there. It's not at the end of the month. And we know there is something in his pocket. And I ought to talk nice now. I ought to talk gentle now because if I make a mistake and I don't talk well, I may not get part of that sin in his pocket. And then when you have got what you want to get, no respect anymore. It's not at the time we want to buy new clothes and buy some gadgets in the family. We'll be showing you no know, extra respect. Uh, yes, sir. And everything. Yes, sir, bro. And you know, we're here. We're there. We serve everything. And then the man is suspecting this woman is looking for something. She wasn't like this yesterday. And I'm going to watch very carefully because I know this one is method. This one is a put on. This one is not real. But you know, every time there is that respect, there is that honor. When there is food and when there is no food. When there is job and when there is no job. When we've got children and when we're still expecting children, there will be that respect for the man. And we're told in Romans chapter 15, we're reading there from verse 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. And there are times the woman is weak. You will know if you're a married man. At such a time, you can give a helping hand in the kitchen. At such a time, after all, many of us who have washing machine, you can put the clothes in the washing machine and help her out. At such a time, it's not uh, difficult to pack all those things and they uh, put in the fridge those little, little things. We can do them when the wife is weak. We that are strong, we need to bear the infirmities of the weak. You men, you say, I see this man how he's talking. He didn't call us privately and talk like that. We're in the same boat and those women can go and ask my wife, see how, uh, bro, your vessel or whatever was talking, does he do that for you too? I'll tell my wife not to answer you. Praise the Lord. The point we are making is, we husbands, we ought to help our wives. And we need to make adequate provision for our wives at home. In First, in first John chapter 3, reading there from verse 16. Hereby perceive with the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Now if we are to lay our lives down for the brethren, how about for your wife? about laying down the salary, laying down the money, laying down your knowledge, laying down everything you have for the good of your wife, for the interest of your wife, for the care of your wife. And the wife too, because it's reciprocal love. As the husband is laying down everything, in you too, you say, in appreciation for what my husband is doing, I too, I lay down everything. Even in my weakness, even in my pain, I will still go ahead the extra mile and sacrifice for the good and the joy and the happiness of my husband. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 8. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 8. Here we find the husband talking to the wife. Then said Elkana, her husband to her, Anna, why weepest thou? Or why eatest thou not? Why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? And you see what the husband was saying. He said, I love you so much. Even though there was no child yet at that time, I am not I better to you than ten sons? Are you not better to me than ten sons? Some couples, once there is no child yet, no joy in the family, no laughter in the family, because there is no child yet, we are almost insulting one another. You are the cause of the barrenness. I am the cause of the barrenness. What's the matter? Is she not better than ten sons? If you pray and believe God, the children will come. They will come in Jesus' name. Whatever stages we are now, the Lord will change bad things to become good. And if there is no child yet, the children will come. Let the joy of the Lord be the strength of our families. Our time is going. Let's go to point number three. The basis of a satisfactory partnership. And you will see what the Lord is telling us already we learned last week. One of the purposes of marriage is partnership. And as we talk about partnership, it has, a, it has a ramifications or interpretations or different demonstrations. There is fellowship there. There is companionship there. There is togetherness. You know that we are so busy, you rise up early in the morning, the wife goes his way, husband goes his way, and before we come back at night, uh, the wife is already asleep, and for a whole week we may not see one another, we are just under the same roof, 
Partnership includes togetherness. And there is sharing in that partnership. We share our joys together, happiness together. We share our problems together. That's the reason the wife was given to you. If you have any sorrow, if you have any concern, if you have any fear, if you have any defeat, anything that is negative, who are you going to open your heart to? It's your wife. If you have married for some years, you may discover that there was a particular problem. And you said, I will not tell this woman. I will not tell my wife. And you tried and tried. You look for solution here. You look for solution there. And the Lord kept the solution away from you. To teach you a good lesson. To teach me a good lesson. After we have tried and labored and gone here, gone there. We just say, one day maybe you are eating together. You just say, my wife, do you know what? I've been thinking about this and carrying this body in. In fact, I, I don't know what we're going to do. And then the wife said, have you thought about this? You say, what? That's the answer. You go to try that thing and the thing works out. It's not the Lord telling you that the reason I gave you that woman is that you'll share your wife together. If there is any burden there, any problem, open your mouth, open your heart, discuss with her, pray together and the solutions will come. Don't keep away from one another. In partnership, there is sharing. In partnership, there is cooperation. There is agreement. There is harmony. There is cordiality. And there is communication. Where you find all these ramifications of partnership there, you'll find that kind of partnership will cement and glue the family together. Nobody will be able to have a crack in your, wall, in your family wall. They discuss anything with the wife and they say, what do you say about this? When my husband comes, we'll discuss. That's how we take decisions in our family. After that, I'll get back to you. Or you, husband, you go to your place of work. A friend, uh, you know, saw you there and discussing an important point. Wanting a decision, give me answer now. Now, I'm sorry, I cannot do that. I'll give you answer later. I still have to get back home, you see. I am not complete without my wife. And therefore, when we discuss together in our partnership, the Lord will give us answer. I will get back to you. And you know, the Lord does it deliberately. There are some things you should have known by yourself. The Lord will not allow you to know everything. He will give part of the solution to your wife so that you will wake up and realize marriage is partnership. He will not give you all the solution. He'll distribute. He'll give part of the solution to her, part of the solution to you so that both of you will make a good marriage family unit. In Romans chapter 12 verse 10, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. In honor preferring one another. When there is anything to discuss, give her the chance to talk. Don't monopolize the conversation. Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. He's talking to both the husband and the wife. My husband offended me. My wife offended me. How can the two of you be living together for five years, ten years? And will, there will not be a point of difference. The difference might be there. The offense might be there. But you don't allow bitterness to settle, rot to settle, or anger. Put away everything. There should not be malice in our families. We're Christian families. And sometimes those offenses are not real. They are fake. You leave your mother at home and you come back from the office and before you undress, your mother calls you apart and tells you story upon story upon story upon story. Bitterness will come. Why are you allowing that? You say, Mama, please uh, wait. And then you discuss with your wife. You hear from the other side. And then your wife said, this is what happened. You say, Mama, please don't cause trouble in the family. This is a Christian family. It's not like, you know, the daddy and mommy used to do. There will be no bitterness in your family. But be kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. You should be asking yourself now. Am I kind to this woman? Am I tender hearted to this woman? Have I forgiven and forgotten all the offenses of the past? Am I doing my best to, have, to make her be a joyful woman? And you should be asking her say, as a wife. Have I forgiven my husband? Do I love him? Am I tender hearted towards him? It is in the area. It is in the realm of love. That all our problems will be solved. 
And the Lord will begin to solve your problem tonight. Tonight we're going to pray together. And we're going to pray for all our families. But before I pray for you. Anything in your heart against your husband. Anything in your heart against your wife. You will unbutton. You, you will uh, leave everything in the hand of the Lord. You will open up everything to the Lord. You say Lord I forgive my husband. I forgive my wife. I will do everything you want me to do. And then as we pray for you tonight. The Lord will bless your family. Let's rise up and pray. A new thing will happen in your family. A breakthrough will happen in your family. He will wipe your tears away in the family. If your barren children will come. If your jobless, he will give you a job. If there is any canker worm in your family, the Lord will destroy them tonight in Jesus' name. Any incurable disease, the Lord will take it away. Any bitterness, the Lord will take bitterness away. Better things will come. Better things will come. Better things will come. Forgive one another. Forgive one another. Be tender hearted to one another. Respect your husband. Respect your husband. Love your wife. Get together. Forget the past. Don't let anybody come in between you. It's the Lord that has joined you together. Don't let any enmity or hostility come between you. Whatever the wife has done, real or imagined, please forgive for the sake of the Lord. And whatever the husband has done, real or imagine somebody reported it or you knew it yourself, overlook it. When you offended the Lord, he forgave you. Forgive and forget. And then you'll make a way for blessings to come to your family. There'll be a breakthrough in your family. Your family will never be the same again. A new thing will happen to you. In Jesus' name we pray. We cannot spend much time here, you understand, because it's night. When you get back home, still pray. When you get back home, husband and wife sit together. Even if it's for five minutes, rectify everything, open up everything. A new day is beginning for your family today. How many of you believe blessing has come for your family? Goodness of the Lord in your family. Children for the barren. Job for the jobless. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because of the way you are leading us. Thank you because of your children, brothers and sisters here. For those who are looking up to you to get married. I pray Lord you will choose for them. Choose for my brothers. Choose for my sisters. I pray you will choose the best for them in marriage in Jesus name. If, they have, if anybody has made any mistake already, I pray, oh Lord, with your divine wisdom, you will correct that mistake. You will rectify that mistake so that this sin will not ruin the life of the brother and of the sister in Jesus' name. All our brothers and sisters who are married, anything that causes sorrow, anything that causes tears, anything that is making them to look back, maybe, maybe looking for another solution. All the curse, all the yoke, and all the negative things you will remove from their families in Jesus' name. Lord, where there is no joy, let there be joy. Where there is no money, prosper them. Bless the work of their hands in Jesus' name. Where there is any debt in a miraculous way, provide for them, pay their debts for them, take care of their families, take care of their children, in Jesus' name. Families asking for children, oh Lord, they've been fasting, they've been praying, and I know that till today, the answer has come. I pray, oh Lord, you'll open the windows of heaven. You will cancel barrenness. Give them children, in Jesus' name. Where agents of Satan, messengers of the devil have penetrated any family and they are causing problems, I command right now. All those agents of the devil, all those servants of the enemy, send their planted there to cause destabilization in the family. I command you, get out in Jesus' name. Bless all the families represented here. Give them the desires of their hearts. Give them answers to their prayers. I pray, Lord, before long, we'll be hearing testimonies. Testimonies of children in the family. Testimonies of job in the family. Testimonies of provision in the family. Testimonies of agents of Satan running away from their families. Confirm the blessing upon everyone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. I pray you'll see the answer to, your, to the prayer in your life. Thank you. God bless you and good night.